is ADK coming by early next week for BTC as Bitcoin on exchanges dries up. We have more wealth funds that are entering into the ETF and flows are starting to ramp up yet again. We're going to discuss that also. A new Grayscale product that is going to allow investors, well, only a select few of investors if you have $2.2 million or more, to participate in a fund that has only tokens and projects that have staking. Which one will be included? We're going to discuss that also. Coinbase's base layer two continues to double in size, reaching $3 billion in total value locked. Is there some plays on the base network that you should keep your eye on? We're going to discuss that and much, much more on today's episode of Sin City Crypto. Let's get into it. Hola! It's your boy, Pig Rob, back in the house. Welcome to Sin City Crypto. If it's your first time checking us out, we're the entertainment-focused cryptocurrency channel. We take old, boring, and stale information, repackage that turkey up in a fun and sexy kind of way. Man, what do you think is going to happen this weekend? Bear, bull market we're going to blast off, take off. Bull market's over. Ah! Bull market's over. What? 69K? 69K, huh? Well, I uh, have to disagree with you. Bull market is not over. And I do think that we're going to be smacking 80,000 next week. What do you think? Probably not. Why not? Cause the having is literally three weeks away, bro. And, you know, the Today volumes. It's, it's three weeks and two days away. Mm. Mm. That's right. Congratulations. Your Thank you. Math skills. Yeah. <laughs> My math skills have been off the last few days. Yes. Uh, no force today. He is a little under the weather. Uh, and so it's just uh, me and uh, Peter over here. So let's talk about some flows here from far side. This is the uh, Bitcoin ETF flows. Take a look in the above the green, which was yesterday's right here. You had 95 million in inflows from BlackRock, 68 million from Fidelity, 67 million from ARK, uh, only 104 million flowing out of grayscale so you can see here uh we peaked at around 642 million on march 18th and we've been kind of steadily going down since then with the exception of this march 25th where we saw 350 million in outflows which brought our net flow yesterday to positive 182.8 million dollars as robin said yesterday from his uh, from him being in New York for that investor, what was that called again? Bitcoin Investor Day? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just um, speaking or speaker event. These ETFs aren't even, haven't even onboarded the, the wealth funds yet, the pension funds yet. They haven't done it. And so we're still early. So for those of you that are saying, or people around you that are saying, oh, the ETF hype has died down. These numbers right here are going to be peanuts compared to what it will be once these these uh, other uh, companies get onboarded. We also have uh, this from Sins Capital. Morgan Stanley is already sending educational material to their clients, a sign they are preparing to pro provide clients access to Bitcoin ETFs. This is the Wealth and Investment Management Division, which oversees $6.6 trillion in assets owned by $6.8 million households hmm now if you remember morgan stanley was one of the early companies that said no to the bitcoin etf right when it went live like nope we're not gonna offer it along with vanguard morgan stanley if i'm not wrong is owned by bank of america or backed by bank of america so this is pretty massive what else is massive is uh decrypted.tax um gifted 50 memberships mm. amazing all I see is was gifted, was gifted, was gifted, was gifted. Also became a member himself as well. Uh, so big shout gotta, out. To you got to give to your son. You know, on an airplane, you're supposed to put your oxygen mask on first before you give it to everyone else. Which he did. So there you go. You, you got his. Decrypt Attack. So also a sponsor of this channel. We love Decrypt Attack. So big thank you for supporting this channel in multiple ways. Um, I think I had. Oh, right here. Also this and we'll stop and talk. So this is from Hunter Horsley, which I believe also Robin was at your uh, event that you went to CEO of Bitwise. He tweeted 
This week, a major national U.S. wealth wealth platform selected and approved advisor access to the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF. They can now discuss Bitcoin ETFs with clients. Months of diligence, honored to be their partner. Hmm. What are your thoughts here? Well, uh, Morgan Stanley's big one, right? <clears throat> yeah. $6.6 trillion. Mm-hmm. A lot of money. A- everyone's going to come around. Right? We, we discussed that yesterday. Uh, if you sit on the outside looking in, you might, you might look at certain commodities. You might look at certain markets and say, hey, we don't want to offer this product. But as more and more people, you know, plug into the system, uh, more and more people get exposure to Bitcoin as these funds grow and become a uh, cornerstone cornerstone of an investment portfolio. Uh, well, if you don't offer it, well, you're going to go somewhere else to get that product if it's deemed by as necessity for most investors, right? Did you say cornerstone? Corner, cornerstone, man. Cor- cornerstone. Like, I've never seen a cornerstone. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, with, with, I mean, don't you agree that, or, or for myself personally, and, and I, I would assume you agree, but don't you think that maybe 10 years from now, maybe 15 years from now, maybe in the, in the longest vision, Bitcoin is going to be just the staple for a portfolio, right? In some percentage, that, that 90% of portfolios out there will have some Bitcoin. In the, same, in the same way that you have, same way you have S&P 500, Gold as almost a, you know, check the box when it comes to a portfolio uh, for retirement accounts. Don't you think that Bitcoin will, will, will be there for most as well? Here's the answer to my question, to your question. Money talks. And uh, if we take a look at what Bitcoin has done over the last 10 years, it has printed money. Not literally, but has made people a lot of money. And so the answer is yes, of course, as long as the foundation of Bitcoin remains the same, right? or continues to improve, which I don't think is going to change. I mean, I think Bitcoin's at a point now where it's it's almost a perfect product to where you don't really want to mess with it. We saw what happened with the Taproot upgrade, right, where you're able to inscribe uh, things on Satoshis, and everyone was freaking out about this. So I, I'm foreseeing that any other change made to the Bitcoin network is going to face a lot of backlash, and they're going to be even more hesitant to do anything. And so if the network continues to grow, which we believe it is, um, and resources start to get cheaper, especially energy, of course, as these miners start to build out the infrastructure and find new ways to harvest energy to use to mine the, uh, to mine the Bitcoin network, I think absolutely yes. I mean, Bitcoin is designed to go up in price against fiat currency. Uh, and then with what governments are doing with fiat and printing and money debasing no. and I will say it's not that Bitcoin's designed to go up against fiat currency. Is that fiat currency is designed to go down in value, and so anything that has a finite that has a fixed supply, wow, is is semantics. Hey, 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 there it is, man. We can end the show right now with that one. Wow. Yes. Uh, Another fifty memberships. Yeah. So I think uh, I think that pretty much covers the entire uh, the entire live stream there. So. <laughs> There you go. Awesome. Uh, then uh, if you are new here, please say hello. We'd love to give you a shout out back at you. Uh, we had F E F F also Avery, Mitch saw Mark Smith, Gouda, Gina Bobina, Sean Suba and C's crypto to all of you. Hola. Welcome. To Sin City uh, is this a new hairstyle moving forward here? I don't get it. My hairstyle. Yeah. I'm not. I'm just asking. I'm not trying to. Yeah, well, you asked with a giant smirk on your face. I'm not so, hey, you know trying I mean? to crap on your hairstyle. I'm just yeah, asking, really. is this something oh, no. new or you're kind of, you know. Are you guys comparing? Are you going through a midlife hairstyle? Crisis? That's what I'm trying to ask. Well, yeah. Why don't you have a, uh, why don't you take some, some kind of personal care to your. your I just, <laughs> I'm not saying anything you. bad about your hair. Isn't? I'm not saying. You literally anything. said midlife <laughs> crisis. I said, at, well, because after, you're changing your hairstyle. At style. what point do you look at, at <clears throat> what point has you're anybody. your hairstyle. When has anybody ever looked at somebody, made a comment, and then said, are you going through a midlife crisis? And it has not been a slight. Not because your hair looks bad, because you're changing it. 
You know okay, so uh, for the rest of eternity, uh, we need to not. I've have had this hairstyle changes. since nineteen. <laughs> yes, you've had the same hairstyle. It was a constructive suggestion, yeah. you know, about this. It was not constructive. No. It was just a question. If you start oh. shaving every day, are you going to go? Is do I get to say? Are you going through a midlife crisis? You can if you'd like to. Okay, but don't you be know, rude about wow, it. Wow, like, yeah. I wasn't rude. I was actually. I thought yes. I was being nice. You said midlife crisis in a very nice way. You know, I think Davis he has the button and the microphone covering the chest hair. It's like, are you at the age where you need to use Viagra? Is that a? <laughs> I said it in a nice way, though. You know. I... Hey, some people use Viagra in their twenties. <laughs> and let's um, move on. <laughs> <clears throat> I do want to give a big shout out before we move on a senseless conversation to our channel sponsor today, which is Cam's Blue Wire Technology. If you want to learn how Cam's can help your business scale and grow, visit BlueWireTech.com or click the link in the description of this video. Uh, they have been right there with us every step of the way with every studio improvement we've made on the network side. Uh, and uh, to be completely honest with you, the show would probably not be working right now if it wasn't for them and their team. So big shout out to Cams. Uh, and so if you want to support them and you want to upgrade your business, visit bluewiretech.com. All right. Let's talk about BTC balances, Robin, have dropped almost 10 billion dollars in 2024 10 billion dollars with a b robin with a b just in case you didn't know how to spell it. bitcoin and then we have this from coin telegraph bitcoin shows signs of exhaustion as quarter one bitcoin price gains nearly 70 percent uh for qcp capital the outlook for the second quarter nonetheless remains very bullish and they've summarized four things one continued bitcoin spot etf demand well, they include also the shrinking supply of GBTC as that runs out. The having London Stock Exchange ETFs, right? Exchange traded products and a potential ETH spot ETF approval. Now, we didn't talk about this yesterday. But Larry Fink, the same interview he talked about uh, the ETF was the Bitcoin ETF was the most successful product. He was asked if Ethereum gets classified as a security, do you still think? the ETF could get passed, to which he said yes. So, Robin, taking a look at this, there's, so this article headline says, right, signs of exhaustion, right? Can't break through that 72K, we keep coming down. 62 up to 69, 72 back down, right? So, so the buyers are getting exhausted, but the bears can't seem to take control just yet. But f out of these four, is there one that you really point to and say, look, that is going to drive quarter two performance for Bitcoin. This is the having, bro. It's 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 clearly the having. But historically, after the having, we've had a lull, right? Yes. However, we've also never had all time highs. However, the, the the amount of Bitcoin that is being procured by the ETFs vastly outweigh what we're seeing in in mining rewards, right? What we see in mining rewards versus how much is getting purchased by the, the by the uh, the ETFs, it's just it doesn't it doesn't balance out. There's just not enough. If you take a look uh, here at my uh, my laptop, here we have oops, no laptop. But uh, if you if you take a look at what we've had in the last couple weeks of flows, uh, when it goes, Robert, what have we had? I'm gonna go get into that here in a second, but I do like I do like your hair though. You do? Yeah. I wasn't trying to be funny. Wow, I got I got approval from David on on, on the it's hair. It's even weirder, creepier than before. But I definitely think Rocco <laughs> has the best hair out of three of us. Sure. Uh, At his age, to have that head of hair, <laughs> I have no context. Uh, oh, no do you rub it with marinara? Yeah, marinara and uh, barbecue sauce. But everything's about age with this guy. <laughs> what the he said, "At your age, I'm I'm glad you're not completely bald, Rocco." Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the concern. Congratulations. You're <laughs> Thank welcome, you. Welcome. Yeah, Thank like you. only under his, 20 years. His old. compliments are, uh, are called amazing. backhanded compliments. Yes. My 80 years old, they look good, right? All right. So uh, here, these are the flows, uh, volumes, or excuse me, this is the volumes on ETFs. Uh, you can see here uh, the first few weeks. So each, each of these groupings here represent a week of trading. And you can see that. Uh, post launch of the ETF, uh, this was the norm, which has been easily doubled here over the last consecutive five weeks. So you can see that 
Uh, even though the price uh, is kind of held flat, well, I would ex- I would expect that the volumes here are going to increase even more so, right? And as we discussed pr- uh, prior and early in the show, that the traditional money, uh, retirement accounts, sovereign funds, uh, they have not put a position in on Bitcoin yet. And that is a massive amount of capital. And so we're expecting these volumes to take another leg up. And also, and the reason the reason I'm speculating that we're going to see the $80,000 Bitcoin next week is because here we had five weeks or six, we had six weeks here, five to six weeks where the volumes were around this range. And now we're at five weeks where the volume is around this range here, which is about twice as much as we were. And then if you take a look at the uh, the flows here as well, uh, so these are these are the the net flows. So everything green here on the bottom is the outflows. And so you can see here in the history of the ETFs, uh, once again, each one of these groupings representing the uh, the oh by a week of trading. Uh, you can see that we have been selling off, and last week was a net negative week, but I think the selling is subsiding, and I think we're going to get back into the inflows, uh, and I think that is coming up next week. But, Robin, so the having is right around the corner. Here's the thing, right? Because the way my brain is wired, it always at some point goes to, well, what it would be the absolute worst-case scenario? Let's say every single Bitcoin out of that GBTC flows out, right? Which we can agree it's not going to happen, right? There's only like 24 some odd days of that, of the massive selling before the, the GBTC is done. No more Bitcoin, right? As that money starts to flow away from Grayscale into IBIT, into Fidelity, into the hands of other people, right? Um, and then, you know, you brought up retirement funds. So I talk about pension funds a lot. In the United States alone, as of, as of 2020, and I'm assuming this number is higher now, $18.8 trillion is what is in pensions, okay? And if you just figure, hey, some might do 5%, some might do zero, some might do two, three, let's just say 1.5% of just the U.S.-based pensions, if they move money into the ETF, the Bitcoin ETF, you're looking at $282 billion worth of, big, worth of money flowing into the Bitcoin ETF. That is just pensions. And you want to start, uh, Rob mentioned sovereign funds, right? Maybe even a central bank. Now, not would probably wouldn't be through an ETF, but still it would bring the demand side pressure to Bitcoin. So what we got to remember here is, you know, and I do this too, but part of the reason I do it is because, you know, we run a show five days a week. So I need to know what Bitcoin is doing. But if, if there's no need for you to check the price of Bitcoin every six hours, right? Refresh your portfolio every day, every two days. You, if you're in Bitcoin, you got you to gotta expand your time horizon, right? If you look over a period of two to five to six to 10 years versus two to five to six to 10 minutes or hours or weeks or months, you're going to be extremely happy with the amount of money you're going to make with Bitcoin um, and the things you're going to be able to do. You're soon enough, if you're sitting on five Bitcoin in the next 10 years, you're going to be able to buy a house with one Bitcoin. You're going to be able to buy a car with 0.25 Bitcoin. So this is the power of Bitcoin can do for you versus with dollars, the opposite happens, right? You need more to purchase less as time goes on because the governments keep printing money. So expand your time horizon, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so as we wrap up Q1, Q2 starts on Monday, April 1st. Q1 so far, 68, or sorry, 63.83% gains in quarter one. Um, Ethereum, we talked about this towards the end of last year, right? We would talk about it on our very last show of last year. Also coming into this year, Q1 historically for Ethereum has been the best performing quarter. And well, it lived up to that as we saw 50, as of right now, 54.73% returns on Ethereum in quarter one of this year. I did post this, yes, or I believe it was yesterday or this morning. It was this morning. Historically, April has been a very bullish month for Bitcoin. It ranks number four out of all the months with an average return of 15.5% over the past 12 years. And for Ethereum, 
April ranks number two with an average rate of return of 27.33%. And also <clears throat> in April, we have, you know, the having. Uh, and just taking a look here, what I was looking at here. So April, you can see here, taking these the bear market out of it, you got 34, 34, 33, 32%, four consecutive Aprils in a row, going back from 2017 to 2020. Uh, May tends to be a little more on the bearish side, but we're going into a month that is historically bullish for Bitcoin. And again, say it again, the halving. So Robin, it's April 30th. Where do you think the price of Bitcoin is? What do you forecast as far as ETF flows? What do you think is going to happen in the month of April? You think we're going to stick to this? Is April 30th, is that, is that the date for the halving? No, no, no. April 30th is just, I'm saying that's the end of the month. Okay. So I'm pretty much saying in April, by the time April's over, where we're going to be at with Bitcoin, is retail going to start FOMOing into the ETF? When, what, what day is the having looking to land on? I think Between the 18th and the 20th. 18th and the 20th? Between 18th. So about two weeks post having. I think we're 92,000. I know that is that sounds like a far like a far away number right now, right? I think that you you think 92,000 like bro, we're, we're we're struggling to get 70. However, uh, I do think that uh the narrative of the having it's something that traditional finance doesn't know about, right? And so We've discussed it. It's normal. It's normal banter for us to discuss the 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 effects and the supply shock of the having and what the miners are going through. However, what do you think about the people on Wall Street? You think they understand the having? You think they know what it means? You you think you think that these? I think the smart ones that are looking to allocate a large amount of money will. I really think that's, they will. But that's what I'm saying is that. That's few and far between. I think a lot of people are just, they, they understand that Bitcoin is here to stay. They look at Bitcoin as an asset that isn't going anywhere. And they also understand it's not a scam. Because that's that's a, what a lot of traditional money has, has hung their hat on is the fact that, hey, Bitcoin is a scam. It's used for the X, Y, and Z. Oh, now it's a legitimate product. It's traded on Wall Street. And you know what? Let me get exposure to it. I do think that, all of a sudden, MSNBC, Fox, Bloomberg, about a week out, are going to be ringing this this bell or, or beating the drum that hey guys, the having is here, and people have people that aren't plugged into the Bitcoin circles and around the water cooler are going to say, hey, what what is this having about? And then it doesn't take a mathematical genius to sit here and say they're, they're only. They're they're cutting this the the mining rewards by half. So the daily inflows of Bitcoin into the network, uh, the new creation of Bitcoin, half it's 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 cut by half. It's going to it's going to affect the price, right? And so I think for that reason, you're going to get a FOMO in from uh, traditional finance. Also, it's just straight mathematics, my dude. Nine hundred Bitcoin being cut, uh, being uh, mined a day. Uh, if you look at how much is getting purchased by these ETFs, it slowed down last week or kind of reversed. But I do think that moving forward here, we're going to see some more accumulation by the ETFs in massive amounts. There's just not enough Bitcoin to go around. And then you have the impending having cutting the supply in half. I would say 92,000 by the end of April next month. And is your case that is going to be retail driven or it's going to be... These. It's it's, it's a both, but I I do think that the the driving factor behind all of this is going to be the fact that traditional money doesn't understand the having, and they will get a quick to a, a quick tutorial on it. Right, they're gonna they're gonna learn about it uh, pretty quickly from mainstream media and other sources. And they're also going to say, hey, why is the price going up, right? If we get to 85000 in the next two weeks, what do you think is going to be the narrative, right? Everybody, all this, all, all these traditional media channels are going to be like, hey, the halving is coming up in next week. We've seen the price rally from 69000 to eighty five. Oh, it's the halving, it's the halving. And anybody that doesn't know what the halving is, which is a lot of Wall Street investors, they're going to be like, hey, what is this? What is this about? And then it's just going to snowball. So. Uh, 
I want to ask you watching, how committed are you to Bitcoin? What are you willing to sell to get more Bitcoin? Are you willing to sell your chair like Michael Saylor as he is now doing podcast standing up? This man is so committed, Robin. He has sold his podcast chair for, for Bitcoin. Very impressive. Shout out to you, Michael Saylor. Also, shout out to all the new people here. I do have a few new names that uh, popped up here. Mm. Uh, we got Johnny Walker, James Bella, R2, 52, Bam Bam, your owner, Calvin, Bob Moe, Jason L, Tatum, Pegless, AF5, Chuck Tassie. And then also Ultima Mayo, $5 Super Chat. I'm talking about the club. Crick Cats, $5 Super Chat. Says the setup looks amazing. To all of you. Hola! Welcome yeah. to Sin City Crypto. That's right. Take a look at the markets, Rob. All right. So I'm taking a look. Bitcoin coming in at 69.5. So a little spill off from where we were yesterday. We had lost the 70K support range. You know, we've been discussing this quite, uh, uh, you know, all week, or at least there's been my narrative is that, hey, we've come up and we've tested this 71.5 level multiple times, uh, three, maybe four touches, and we just keep getting rejected there. And so until we can cross that level, and trade above 71.5, say 72, uh, for any prolonged period of time. I think we're off to the races at that point. But taking a look, you can see here in the last 24 hours, uh, we did uh, we did lose that support. But uh, taking a look at the broader crypto markets, uh, we do have some of the big gainers. Dog with hat still up another 80% let me, Robin, of let the me, week. Let me ask you a question here, okay? So typically meme coins have been very popular. One, obviously because of the memes, the community, but two, because they got a bunch of zeros. And so people buy into the fact that, hey, I can buy a hundred million coins for a hundred dollars. And if it just goes to 10 cents or one cent, I'll be a millionaire. We're seeing Dog With Hat's really the first one where it's got a $4 billion market cap and the price is over a dollar. It's at, it's almost four bucks. Yeah. Can you see this thing getting to get, having a run like SHIB did to $40 billion, which would put it roughly at about $40? You know, I think, uh, here's the thing. I think the psychology is actually flipped on this, right? And, and when I say mm -hmm. that is the fact that, hey, you could have got exposure to dog with hat. You could have picked this up for pennies, and now it's worth $4, right? And so that psychology, I think, is actually maybe a new mold, maybe something new. We'll see. I'm glad you brought that up. But so, but, but that makes sense if it's at a penny. Yeah. But well, what if this, it's at thirty bucks? But, bucks? No. But here's what I'm saying is that perhaps the next meme coin you pick up, or maybe maybe the next meme coin craze is instead of it having eight zeros, maybe the next meme coin trend will be hey. Let me pick this up at five cents. This is a number that I can, I can, you know, realize in my head, right? Because you can't, you can't really fundamentally grasp eight zeros and a, and a, and a five, right? It, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to you as the numbers that you would use in everyday life. However, five cents does. So if I say, hey, this meme coin just launched, it's five cents. Look what happened to Dog with Hat. It's at ten dollars. Let's just say that example. Wow, that's that's a 10x. We put it 50 cents. Like you start, your brain starts doing math that makes sense. But when something's got eight zeros and a five, and then it's up 100, percent you're like, oh, how many zeros are we at now? Like it, it just doesn't, it doesn't mathematically add up. It's quite as easy as saying, hey, it went from five cents to 50 cents. But Robin, like, wow, how many, like how many times? Just from our our friend uh, Tess alone. No, we pick on him a lot on the show. Yeah. How many times said I'm not selling ship until it drops two zeros? Right? Yeah, but I, what I'm saying is that I just think that the mentality perhaps is changing. I think that what could be of old, because remember, things are very trendy. They're very up and down. They're very, hey, it used to be this way. I think, I think that perhaps we'll look back maybe five, ten years from now. We'll look back and we'll laugh. Like, remember when these coins would come out and they would have, like, seven zeros? Like, how dumb was that? And... From this point forward, perhaps we'll we'll see something where hey, these to these tokens are coming out. They're at a uh, one penny or half a cent, and and from there forward, we're seeing them you know get into the dollar range, the ten dollar range, the hundred dollar range. I, got, I think it's just numbers that mathematically you you can you can relate to.
And you know, hey, dogwood hat now mm. four dollars even. So there you go. So you think it's gonna help? Even on the it's gonna help Doge. You think? What's that? What about Doge? Yeah, you think it's gonna be helpful for Doge at this point to get I, to a dollar, two dollar, three dollar? I think so. I mean, it, it it makes sense. And the first thing that pops into my head is, is Doge when we talk about you know something that's in a relatable price that is still you know relatively cheap. So people might look at Dogwood Hat and be like, hey, man, you know what? Dogwood Hat is coming in at $4. I could pick up Doge for even cheaper at 21 cents. And so for me, um, I think I think this, I don't want to call it. I don't want to call say, it. hey. I don't no, wanna, no, call it. No, no, I'm just saying that because I, I don't I don't know. I don't know myself personally, but I wouldn't be surprised. I, I'm kind of on the fence, but I wouldn't be surprised if things of old is way too many zeros, and now we'll get things that are, you know, around a dollar. I think that that is the number that makes sense for us. So. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I do want to show a Bitcoin chart, and, and I got Bitcoin here on the week, okay? I just want everyone to understand, when you start diddling in the hour, the four hour, the 30-minute, the, the, the five-minute chart, right, You're, you can see, you know, little downtrends, but I want you to zoom out. And just look at what Bitcoin has done since it bottomed out on in November of 2022, around 15,816K, okay? It has consistently made higher highs and higher lows. And when it does make a higher high, it tends to consolidate until it reaches a new higher low. And then we see a big rally up, consolidation, big rally up, consolidation, big rally up. And guess where we're at now? Consolidation. But if you take a look here, this is the Luxago price action concepts. We got a big break of structure here on the weekly chart, which is very, very bullish. So the parameters for this is you have to make a certain amount of higher highs and higher lows for the structure of the chart on the weekly to change. And it has changed. And this is a massive one going back to the top of last cycle in 2021. And so can we see some downward, downward price action on Bitcoin? Yes. But again, if you zoom out, even go to the monthly, I'm going to go to the one month here. I mean, this is just, this is a beautiful chart, right? Just zoom out. When in doubt, zoom out. It is so true. When in doubt, zoom out. Uh, stop panicking over a little 5 10% dips. It is what Bitcoin does. We can't sit here and act like we've never seen it before. Um, and then I do want to show the uh, crypto bubble. So uh, we saw Fetch AI had a big run up to $3 and around 42 cents. It is down around 7.2%. I did see a lot of comments on our uh, Fetch AI merge video we put out yesterday talking about, well, what should I do? Should I buy? Should I sell? Um, in the video, we talked about the founder of Fetch and that whole team, right? The Artificial Super Intelligence Committee or whatever they call themselves, those superheroes. Uh, they're counting on the, uh, on the people that arbitrage these things to bring the price levels down. So if you don't understand how to arbitrage and you don't feel comfortable doing it, you're probably going to lose money. Uh, and so that is how stable coins keep their pegs. Algorithmic stable coin is from arbitragers, right? So for me, the best thing you do for you to do is, is if you don't understand how to arbitrage and you don't want to mess with it and you, cause you got to be pretty active, right? Leave it the way it is. Right. And even if the price, when it does finally swap, even if you're on the wrong end of it, it will even out because, again, of arbitragers, right? The value will continue to go up if you believe in AI, crypto, blockchain, and the uh, projects like Fetch, Ocean, and Singularity Net. Uh, as Rob mentioned, Dog with Fat, the highest gainer, 17.7%. Litecoin is up 11.8%. Um, you know, the CFTC did come out with their... I forget what it was. It was uh, not a press release, but they essentially labeled Litecoin and Bitcoin and Ethereum a commodity. Uh, ETH didn't rally, but Litecoin did. And so a lot of people are connecting those dots there. So um, that's all we got for the markets. Let's uh, take a peek at some of the big news we got going on here. So this one is uh, interesting, right? Uh, Grayscale revolutionizes investments for millionaires with a new proof of stake fund. As anticipated, Grayscale has announced the imminent launch of a new dynamic income fund focused on investing in proof-of-stake tokens. The company has specified that the fund, identified by the ticker GDIF, will be accessible exclusively to accredited investors with a net worth of at least 
$2.2 million. The stated goal of the fund will be to maximize returns through staking rewards associated with proof-of-stake digital assets. Think Solana, think Ethereum, think Avalanche, think maybe even Cardano, who knows? The fund will be responsible for managing the staking and unstaking of a series of tokens, distributing the related to reward the related rewards to its investors. Um, what are you what are your thoughts here, Robin? I think uh, this is something that a we saw in the ETH applications, right, where yeah. they were amended. Um, but this so just, so this here here's my my question. So this isn't just proof of stake cryptos bundled up. They're actually staking the the cryptos as part of think of Lido. I, I right? but I'm saying that, that's what they're doing, right? It's not it's not just a basket of proof of stake cryptos. It's actually staking the cryptos that they have to, to generate more yield for the holders correct so let's just say there's three of them solana avalanche yeah. cardano they're, they're staking all of them. they're staking they're them and then rewards yeah. all right interesting not surprised that grayscale is the one behind it right they were pretty innovative when it comes to offering products for traditional finance uh, grayscale launched back in 2013 so they've been at it for 11 years now and they were offering Bitcoin when it was around $100 or just shy of it as well. So they are early to the game and don't mind pushing against what people deem uh, is safe, right? Because when Bitcoin was under $100 and they, they had their product listed on Wall Street, they, it's very interesting that, you know, they didn't get shut down because Bitcoin is very new then. That was when Silk Road, you had Mt. Gox, it was it was a lot of uncertainty when it came to Bitcoin. And even now, uh, you know, if I look back, I, I wasn't a believer of Bitcoin in 2013. I was still naive to the, to the idea. So it, it just shows you that they're, they're out here taking some risk. And I think that they're taking massive risk in the, with, the, uh, Gary Gensler, yeah, with the Gary Gensler-led uh, SEC who is trying to crack down on all things crypto. Very interesting that they're just like, hey, man, we know that the SEC is against staking. They've they've sent a Wells notice to Coinbase everyone. Uh, and everyone else, uh, basically Say everyone. <laughs> targeting staking as one of the features that they don't, they will not bend on. And here you have Grayscale coming out. Hey, man, we're, we're going to have a fund that not only offers, you know, not only are, offers staking uh, products, but we're actually going to generate yield for you. That's it's bold, man. Let's do it. Um, this is very intriguing to me because we continue to see Gary Gensler, the SEC and detractors of crypto try to draw parallels to what digital assets are and, and securities, right? So you take a look at this. Well, you're earning yield through staking and then you're paying the investors, which kind of sounds like a dividend, right? which is part of a security contract, which is part of a security. So it's very interesting to me. Also, I do want to address uh, S-Dog said, why wouldn't you do that yourself? It's simple, my friend. A, some of these people, they don't care to learn how to do it or, or don't want to do it. They just want to offload it out to someone else. So you have the convenience factor. Also, you have the tax factor, right? Taxes in crypto are a nightmare, right? You get this little thing from Coinbase, but half the time doesn't have your cost basis. You send it, you, you buy it, you onboard fiat, you buy it, you send it here, you bring it back. They don't know where the hell the money's been. They don't know how much money you've truly made. Honestly, and it wouldn't even be a product that I would write off, right? Okay, here's the thing. To do staking, to offer staking for multiple chains, it can be extremely complex, right? And so for me, it, like when I stake Cardano, right? You have to have a native wallet, you stake uh, Avalanche, you know, you, you have to go find find the wallet for that as well. Same thing with uh, Ethereum. You got to go to w whatever platform. And it could be extreme. It, it's going to be extremely time consuming. If I, if I said, David, yeah. I would love for you to stake $10,000, but pick 10 different staking products, right? Or, or projects. Stake them on chain, 10 different ones. How long do you think it would take you to do that? Me personally, not as long as the average. No, but, but, but what but, I'm saying yes, is just like yes. gener generally, like realistically, I mean, you're not going to do, you're not going to be able to do one in less than, I would say, an hour, right? Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So even if you know what you're doing, even if you have a cryptocurrency YouTube show, 
you're you're not going to get one done in under an hour, right? You have to send, do a test transaction, send it there, stake it, wait. And so you find yourself, if you're doing, if you're staking into 10 different layer ones with staking returns, you're, you're at a minimum an hour, even if you're an expert. So you have 10 hours worth of work to get into a basket of 10. 10 hours if, if you're an expert. And so for me, I don't want to waste 10 hours staking. Honestly, I would just rather, hey, man, you know what? I want to stake $10,000. I want to diversify it, and I want to play into all of the staking or into uh, 10 different staking uh, projects. I think it's a, just a lot simpler to do it that way, right? Convenience. It's convenience. And, and then on top of that, if you don't have the know-how, if you're not familiar with it, well, then at that point, it's a no-brainer, right? Oh, like, I could not even, I couldn't even, I couldn't even start to, to fathom how I could tell a relative that has no experience on crypto how to stake. It's already hard enough for telling them how to buy crypto, right? I'm like, yeah, Coinbase. And like, is that an app? You're like, yeah. And they're like, is it safe? And you're like, what, what's KYC? Why do I got to? And they call you like, hey, man, they're asking for my ID. Is this normal? Like, <laughs> like that, that whole process in itself. And now, now think about this. Now there's traditional investors on Wall Street that hold an ETF. And they're like, hey, man, what is this staking thing? This sounds, it sounds cool. And so for that reason, I think it is a very tailored product that not only services traditional finance, but will also service uh, crypto individuals as well that want to have a diversification uh, or position on multiple uh, staking platforms. We have a lot of new people here. Just want a quick shout out. Uptown Jake Becker, CNFT, JB, Triple G, Stas, Jesse, Ace, Joshua, uh, Test Kid, Tim, Man, uh, Chinox, uh, KRL, Penne, uh, Chunk Town, Green, Old Friend, Alexander, and Adam P. To all of you, hola! Welcome to Sin City Crypto. Here's an interesting thought. What's up? Why has Vanguard not offered the Bitcoin ETF? Why do they not offer this gold ETF? Do you know the answer to that question? They're haters? No. They do not, they do not give access to their clients to products that don't generate revenue. This product would generate revenue. Uh, I'm just feeling, saying. I'm, I'm, I'm not they're saying not they're going to do it. I'm just saying. Just saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, what I'm saying is what I'm saying. Also, what wow. what this is saying is base network TBL exceeds three billion dollars with daily users surpassing five million. Uh, base hit the three billion dollar fi uh, milestone five days after crossing the two billion dollar milestone. Notably, the network took 203 days to reach its first billion and just 23 days to touch two and five days to hit three. So what we're trying to say is this thing is accelerating pretty damn fast. Um, and then take a look at uh, the meme sector on base is exploding as well. Uh, you have some of these daily gainers here. You got like 30,000% gainers. Uh, we know base is extremely cheap compared to Ethereum. Um, and the net, I mean, and you talking about a, an exchange that has a hundred million users onboarded onto their platform and people can interact and use their layer two directly from their Coinbase wallet, which you can link directly to your Coinbase account. Super simple. I was walking my mother-in-law through buying a coin. Well, I actually bought it for her, but I want to show her how to do it. So I went in there, I downloaded the Coinbase wallet on her phone. I, can, I showed her how to connect Coinbase to the wallet so she can transfer the crypto if she wants to buy stuff that's not listed on Coinbase to the Coinbase wallet and how to do it. And it was, it was pretty simple. Did have to answer a few questions, but more simple than, hey, MetaMask, go into the RPC, go to the right network, input this UID, input this, uh, this, this MPC node number, whatever the hell it is. All right, now you're good. Now you got to get Ethereum, but it's got to be wrapped because it's on base. Too complicated, right? And so we're talking about a network here, doesn't have a token yet, which people are speculating that- It's not gonna be a token. You don't think so? Why not? No, because it, it just seems kind of grimy, right? It seems kind of like you're trying to generate revenue. And I think that they're just trying to push crypto forward. I mean, you look at all their commercials, right? The commercials don't promote, you, you, the Coinbase commercials don't promote Coinbase. No, they promote crypto adoption. They, they promote crypto adoption. And I think that's the whole idea behind base chain. 
the the entire idea behind base is hey here is a layer two that doesn't have a token to it that is user friendly that is part of our app and we're not trying to we're not trying to gouge you here we're not trying to generate some money we're not trying to get you to buy some token on some chain that nobody uses we just made a product it's badass come use it crypto's great i think that's what they're trying to do that's been their overall message that's what they're doing like they they could they could david just settle with the sec just bend the knee and be like hey man you know what sec we don't we would be easier just to settle and not go through this long litigated court case but instead they take these these exorbitant costs of lawyers and and court fees and all and, and everything that goes into uh, going against the the sec all of that they put on their back for what for the space, because they believe in the space, and they're not necessarily worried about money, right? If they were worried about money, they would say, hey, man, you know what? Let's not worry about this court case. Let's just keep operating and, and just make as much money as possible. Don't you agree? When they when they make the commercials, they could say, hey, let's, let's put our logo everywhere. Let's talk about how everyone should use Coinbase. No, they, they promote the, the channel, uh, their, their, their exchange. And then the same is done here with, with Base. They could have made a token, Sure, they could have fought new tooth and nail against the SEC, but I think at the end of the day, they just wanted to make a product that their their customers and users could use as an alternative to the pricey layer one that is Ethereum. And also, hey, you don't have to worry about speculation on privacy. Um, uh, I'm curious, the people watching, do you guys, uh, you guys using base? Are you trading any coins? Do you have any meme coins on base? I know a lot of people. Feel like, hey, that's the new, that you know, that's the new meta. Solana people taking profits if, made a lot of money on Solana with meme coins. They're going to move that over to base. I'm curious, uh, any of you watching? Do you guys have any meme coins on base, or do you use the platform? Um, I do want to talk about this from uh, Mr. Novogratz. Billionaire Mike Novogratz predicts ballooning U.S. debt will spur new Bitcoin adoption. From Daily Hoddle here, so he said, "Quote: Each 100 days, our government is adding a trillion dollars of debt." We're at 34 trillion. We will be at 35 and then 40 and then probably 45. That story is so powerful. It makes it easy for salespeople, for registered investment advisors to tell their clients, put a couple percent of your net worth in Bitcoin. And you're seeing that happen. This is a process that's going to go for years, not for months. Do you agree with that statement, Robin? That... Just this sheer amount of printing, everyone is in danger. It's going to freak people out and push them to Bitcoin? I mean, it's, I don't know about freak people out, but it's just the reality of it. Whether or not it scares you or not, the reality is very simple. Money is trash, and it's getting more trasher by the minute. Mm. Yeah, okay. And It's and, great. Okay. Yeah. It was a very uh, intellectual wow. thought there. So if you want to protect yourself from the trasher. No. So honestly, we, we understand it. everyone around you is aware that everything is getting you more expensive. I don't think I've never talked to anybody in, in the last couple of years that, that, uh, that doesn't agree that something is wrong with the money system, right? <laughs> to put it lightly, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody, everyone. And, and even they might not know whose fault it is that 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 I'll say that they might not say they might think that their their president has nothing to do with it. They might think that the Federal Reserve has nothing to do with it. However, uh, they the, the the consensus here, everyone's in agreement. Something in the money system is broken. And so you, you got to look at alternatives, right? If something is broken, if your car breaks down and you got to get to work. Whether or not you want to get mad at the car, if you want to say, hey, man, Dodge sucks, man. Dodges always break down. Like, don't buy a Dodge. I bought a Lemon. It doesn't matter. You can sit here and complain about it all you want, but at some point, you're going to need an alternative. Uh, Dodge is pretty bad. It Dodges are pretty bad. Don't buy a Dodge. Uh, so, <laughs> so <laughs> here's the thing. It, so whether you want to or not, you need money to operate. You need savings to live. You need to protect your investments, you need to protect your spending power. 
And it's not even an option. You just have to live. And if the money system is broke, in the same way, your car breaks down, you got to get to work, you're going to find an alternative. The money system is broke and you have to pay your bills. You're going to find an alternative. Bitcoin rises to the top. There you go, Brent. Bam. I agree with you. Um, I think, you know, as time goes on, you, you know, you see these, uh, these graphs, these graphics on like Twitter, social media, right? Uh, the, the cost of a house in dollars versus the cost of a house in Bitcoin. 10 years ago, five years ago, today, you're going to continue to see that and people are going to realize like, do I really want to just sit on cash, right? Do I want to sit on cash and watch it erode 8 to 12% every single year when it comes to my purchasing power? Or do I want to keep my money in something like Bitcoin that is going to appraise in value in relation or against at least fiat currencies? We've seen this year alone, Bitcoin make all-time highs against multiple fiat currencies like the Japanese yen, the Australian dollar, the British pound, the euro, um, the United States dollar. And so that is going to continue. I think people's distrust in government and what they've been doing uh, has been, has been more and more people are like, they're actually starting to wake up like, what are you guys doing? You're printing money into oblivion. You're supposed to be supporting, you know, these government funds or whatever, helping people, but you're not. You're funding wars. You're doing all this dumb stuff. Uh, let me take that money I have and let me put it in something that I can control that I can see a gain in value. So I think it's very, very important. Right. And then we did have a $10 super chat from early bird. Yeah. Be out next week. You want to give us uh, Easter love. So thank you. Today's good you. Friday. Yeah. And then also a few new people, Brendan D, uh, Kagi, crypto storm, RRT, Alec S the mid journey and Ammer boss. All of you. Hola! Welcome to Sin City Crypt. Also, we see that the bots are in full force here. And so, big shout out to the mods here. Are you buying bots cleaning, again? Cleaning that up. Yes, I'm buying bots Stop to buying spam bots. our own chat. That's a great Shame on you. Uh, you know what? Let's actually, let's, uh, let's fight the bots. Let's spam our own chat. But this one, I had to go find my sign. Put mm -hmm. O-L-A in the chat. Uh, that's our uh, slogan if you're new here. Wow. It also means hello in Portuguese. Wow. There you go. <laughs> so uh, put OLA, OLA in the chat. We got 400 live viewers. Let's see if we can get half of you to put Ola. I'll put the first one in there. So uh, the target is 200 Olas in the chat. Let's wow. go. What happens if we hit the target? Uh, then uh, I'll say Ola again. Wow. In a very even I cannot, way. I cannot wait. Yes. Man. Yeah, it's great. Um, let's talk about RWA. So Ondo Finance. Joins BlackRock's tokenized fund as inflows surpass $160 million. <clears throat> so they're transferring $95 million in assets to BlackRock, uh, which is so Ondo is a platform specializing in tokenized real world assets. Uh, it is also on the Mantle Layer 2 network, which we did do a video on today. Uh, uh, it'll go out to the members first. You're going to want to watch that video. Um, so they moved $95 million worth of assets to BlackRock's uh, build fund. The strategic move enables Ondo Finance to facilitate instant settlements for its U.S. Treasury-backed token, OUSG. This makes Ondo Finance a major participant in the BlackRock's ecosystem. Take a look at Ondo Finance, ranked number 91, according to CryptoRank.io, a price of 88.5 cents per token. It is backed by the likes of Pantera Capital, Coinbase Ventures, and DCG. Max supply of 10 billion, circulating only 1.44. Did have a lot of funding rounds. So it had the uh, latest one was on in April of 2022, where it raised $20 million. Take a look at the vesting here. So current ecosystem unlock. Uh, you have protocol development unlocked happening. Uh, this is happening in around 294 days. So a little less than a year. It's going to be a cliff unlock. And then private sales community is ongoing. So pretty spread out. So not bad. But still, only, uh, what was that, 14% of their supply is currently uh, circulating. So not the best, but this is something to keep an eye on. We talk about what narratives are going to drive the crypto market, especially in the bull market moving forward. You hear a lot about gaming, you hear a lot about AI. Real world, token asset, real world asset tokenization is a big one. I mean, the one in the article listed, treasuries. The most liquid and deepest market in the world is U.S. treasuries, right? Trillions of dollars are being moved from one person to another person, one entity to another every single day. Uh, and so 
Um, what are your thoughts on that narrative? And what are your thoughts on a, a projects like Onda Finance? Should people get exposure to that? And also, w- would it be more wise to get exposure to the L1 that handles it or maybe the specific project like an Ondo? Uh, I don't know too much about Ondo. I mean, other than what you're kind of, uh, you know, describing there. So that is, is that the one that that's, that's the one that BlackRock is. They they the just one. joined their fund, correct? So tokenization of real world assets is is it on Ethereum? It is on Mantle. Well, or, it's a DAP on Mantle. So it's a DAP on, on Mantle, which runs on Ethereum. So it it is in the ether uh, the Ethereum ecosystem. Very interesting. You know what? I think you're honest. I mean, and as you're as you're discussing the narrative of, hey, is this a new sector? I think it might be. I mean, think about it. We, we saw last bull market uh, in 2020 really get kicked off by DeFi, right? We saw the rise of Uniswap. You had the Uniswap airdrop, which was pretty new to people at that point in time. They're like, wow, I just got donated money. That's not crazy. And then we also got the airdrop from the president three times. And <laughs> you know what happens to the money system there. But it, anyways, it was what happened was, and the 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 last bull market, which we think will will be very comparable to what we saw last bull market, a lot of what we saw last bull market will happen again. And it was that sectors popped off. Remember, we had the metaverse sector, we had the DeFi kind of kicked it off, and the NFTs went nuts. Then you had the meme coins, and the list goes gaming. on and on, and gaming. And so each one of those sectors were new and innovative, right? We we didn't have DeFi before. It wasn't like 2020. We we're like, DeFi is back. Remember 2017? And so every sector was this new revolutionary kind of way of thinking about stuff. And, and if you think about it this way, like, wow. So what is going to be new that people are going to have buzz to? They're going to be like, hey, man, this smart contract thing is pretty badass. Like, we don't need an intermediary. Like, this is all done on chain. These smart contracts are pretty cool. And people, like, really bought into the idea and started trying to get exposure to all smart contracts. And then each sector happened then uh, sequentially. And then if you look at this sector, it's going to happen again. It's going to be things that are new and kick down barriers and tokenization of real-world assets. If that's what BlackRock is getting behind, they're putting money in Ondo and this project that just came out of nowhere, been out for, what, three months? And, and you know, the token's been out for three months. Maybe, maybe they've been around for a little longer, but they haven't traded for very long. On top of that, they're doing something completely different, and they're doing it on a scalable solution that is outside of the base layer of Ethereum. So it's very interesting, something to keep an eye on. Is Ondo the next the next big thing to pop off or perhaps some of their competitors that offer similar products. Maybe it's something to definitely keep an eye out. So, well, uh, I mean, they've, you've, you've perked my interest, man. They've, uh, they've tied themselves to BlackRock, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they put, we, as mentioned, a hundred million dollars into the BlackRock fund. And if you believe that token asset is, or uh, uh, asset tokenization is going to be a big narrative in 2024 and beyond, which I do. Yeah, I agree. You're going to want to look at projects like this. Um, but there, there was none that 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 stood out last bull market, right? We didn't really have it. That's what I'm it saying. Wasn't even a, that, a com- that, conversation. That's what I'm saying. So so now it might be it might be wise to to look at this sector because the smartest money globally, the largest asset manager, if you were to look at BlackRock and say, hey, where do they rank in GDP as a country? Which they obviously are not. They are still in the top five, right? Yep. It, they yep. would be a top five country if the company decided to buy land and, and, and declare independence, right? And so the smartest money out there is basically what I'm saying is identifying this as a place that is going to be profitable. That's where they're parking their money. Uh, something to think about. Uh, also, big shout out to Ashley in the chat. No, uh, Jimmy was upset. Uh, he didn't get to meet you. Should have planned your Disney vacation at another time. Yeah, shame on you. Hmm. <clears throat> um, so I guess I'll end it at this. Um, just, you know, you personally, are you looking for projects like Ondo? Because I don't think you answered this question. Or are you more on, hey, which layer one's going to handle it? It's, it's the same way that I evaluate. If this is an emerging space that I'm interested in, I'm going to say, hey, uh, who is the leader? 
who is going to lead this this market or this sector. And then that's my strongest exposure. And then from there, I'll just scale in and smaller, higher risk, right? And at at number 80 on the market cap list for Ondo, just outside of, just inside the top 100, it seems to make a lot of sense to get exposure to that. Because if that's, if that's the chosen chain for BlackRock to go with, they have a lot of people that work there that are, doing research and if they're getting behind some new product you better believe it's been well uh, vetted and so for that reason i would if i if i were to scale into this and i'm not saying I, this is more we're kind of discussing this my wheels are turning here on the fly and i would say that i'll look into it but if i were to pull the trigger it would probably be with something that's pretty secure blackrock thinks they're secure obviously if they put money in it they probably do um i would probably start there um, I do want to give uh, one more shout out to our channel sponsor, Cam's Blue Wire Technology. If you want to learn how they can help your business scale and grow, visit bluewiretech.com. Uh, we're going to have two videos out for you today. One is Mantle. The other one is a new DeFi project uh, that we've uh, that our sponsors of the show. It's called Valinity. Uh, that's going to be a breakdown of what the project is. Um, pretty interesting stuff there. You're going to want to watch the video. Um, something I've used. Uh, I've downloaded their app. And so something that I just want to bring to you guys' attention to kind of dig into more and, and learn more about. Um, also, guys, uh, oh, yeah. follow us on Twitter. We'll see you mo Monday's April Fools. Wow, that, that's a holiday you're excited about, huh? <laughs> Very excited. So you say see you Monday it means like you're gonna be here. We'll be here. Are you sure? We'll be here. April, April Fool. Fool. Uh, Rocco. Mm -hmm. What is that? <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. It's been an amazing week. We are looking forward to an even better week next week as we kick off one of the most bullish months for Bitcoin and crypto. Come join us Monday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Sin City, crypto. Everybody know we here for entertainment and info. I'm going to show you how to get that big dough. So every day stay tapped in for big facts, no cap in. With Bitcoin, if you're in, then you win. We divide the pie with no fraction. It's Big Rob, David. I spit the game, but they gave it. Name the coin, it's your favorite. I got dry powder, why save it? To the OGs, new beginners. Special shout out to the well members. Buy a dip, sell winners. Ain't really nothing you can tell sinners. Tune in for the latest new flavors. They gonna teach us mean coins. They polarizing like barbecue chicken pizzas. I laugh with a major grin. Lag as we trade them in. Baddies, they came to sin. And sinners gonna play the win. Screaming, hola, till my bags are flowing over. Hold ya to the moon and to the solar. Won't I? Don't be letting fall. No more control, yeah, it's over when the finger tornado close, yeah.